Disclaimer. The views expressed on this episode of Perspective Platoon with Pratik are solely the opinions of the host and the guest. The content of the conversation is not reflective of the institutions or establishments mentioned therein. Take all these opinions with a pinch of salt and a dash of lime if needed. Namaskara, good morning, good afternoon or good evening whenever you're watching or listening and welcome to this episode of Perspective Platoon with Pratik. My guest this week is Nasser Malik. Nasser and I um have known each other actually from a place where I used to stay at and I just wanted to have a conversation with him because he seems like quite the interesting person in terms of his interests and the paths that he's taken in his life be it through experimenting with crypto with stocks and so much more in this episode we spoke a lot about that and also about mindset and mentality uh, but unfortunately we had to cut the recording short because something came up but there's still a ton that you'll get to learn from this episode so i hope that you take away a lot from this as well so without further ado i present to you nasser malik on this episode of perspective platoon with pratik Hey Nasser, how's it going, man? I'm doing well, man. What about you? Doing good, doing good, doing good. Uh, before we get started, let the people know who you are, uh, what some of your likes are, some of your dislikes are, any future aspirations, interests, the whole sp- the whole spiel. Um, my goal in life is to just help people out and make the world a better place. Simple. Gotcha. Do you want to let us know what your full name is at least? <laughs> My name is Nasser Malik. Gotcha. So, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um what was the genesis of that sort of feeling of wanting to make the world a better place and help people? I think as people um if we help other people out maybe they can make the world a better place also. So I mean like let's say you're helping someone out like young people for example they are the future so if you're helping them you're basically contributing to make the future a better place mm-hmm. so um just creating a system a protocol in life where you have a business or a charity that just keeps on going without you like a machine is mm-hmm. like it's like pretty interesting concept for me Mm. Gotcha. So it's basically sort of like setting something up to where people living in the future can do their part to help keep the world a better place. Exactly. Even after, you know, even after you're gone or whatever, you know, when you move yeah. on. Mm. Right. That's 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 beautiful. That's beautiful. So like have you sort of thought of the ways or I mean I'm cuz you're someone whom from what I know you're quite a quite the busy person like we were talking off air as well. So um yeah. What are some ways that you're trying to work on that and uh to sort of contribute and give back? One way is to establish business like as many businesses as possible, charity organizations using technology to make a world the better place. For example, uh if you know cryptocurrency, um there's this thing called the blockchain network. So mm-hmm. I feel like as human beings decentralized economy or decentralized society is the future because if you mm-hmm. think about it our future is to colonize space to go in space mm-hmm. go on other planets and to do that we need to have like a robust system a protocol where there's no flaws or manipulation in the system so if you use like blockchain technology that can help solve that issue of uh, manipulation mm. so. for those who, for those of them who don't know do you want to elaborate a little on what blockchain is blockchain is like a decentralized network where basically once you put something on the blockchain on the network 
you cannot mm-hmm. edit it. No one can modify mm. it. If you want to modify it, you have to modify every single account on the blockchain within a few seconds, actually less than a second, which is mm. impossible. Right. Unless you have like quantum computer or something. So it's like a heavily encrypted ledger. That's what mm. I think of it. Mm. And it's all synchronized. Because mm. so. cause I've heard people talk about it a lot even in terms of... Um, combating with hacking and things like that so is that is right. that right like uh there's a lot of things that it can do um so the worst thing that can happen is that so on the blockchain let's say you own bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency and you have a mm-hmm. wallet and if your private key so there's a public key and a private key and if your private key gets leaked then they have access to your funds on the wallet. Mm. So the worst thing that can happen is that someone hacks your private key. Mm. And it's really hard to crack that because the private key is like heavily encrypted also. Gotcha. So, yeah. Mm. Speaking of crypto, uh, I mean, I'm just a little curious about crypto. So if you don't mind me indulging in that a little more, uh, can you elaborate on what crypto is for those of us who are unaware? (laughs) What I think of crypto is like, okay, so you know how you have like the US dollar and gold? Mm -hmm. So crypto is like a decentralized version of gold and silver, but it's not like the US dollar. It's like, it's encrypted. Like, Mm. it's like the most trusted network where basically no one can manipulate it. Like, for example, the US dollar, you can just keep on printing it. The Federal right. Reserve can keep on printing the U.S. dollar. But with crypto, right. there's different type of crypto. Some of them, there's just limited amount. Some of them, like, it just keeps on growing. But the network cannot be manipulated. You cannot create fake bills on the network. Mm. Mm. So that's what I think so, of crypto. I mean, there's plenty of cryptos. Uh, now mm. people are building cryptos on top of cryptos, which is crazy. Mm. <laughs> mm. so but, i mean i guess the most uh sort of ones that are out there are like bitcoin and dogecoin and those kind of things right if i'm not mistaken yeah so bitcoin is so dogecoin is like a meme coin it's like there's a whole bunch of amount it's like there's millions of dogecoins on the dogecoin network so it's like mm-hmm. a meme coin but recently there has been a hype and people got into the hype and some of them lost money some of them made a whole bunch of money Bitcoin is kind of like Dogecoin, but it's limited. And so with Bitcoin, you can actually mine it using uh, using your GPU on your computer. Mm. But uh, the difficulty of mining gets harder and harder and uh, it gets expensive. So there's other cryptos on the network like Ethereum, Litecoin, and some of them are really new, meaning that you can easily mine them you don't even have to buy them you just use your computer and electricity to mine it and free you get free uh cryptos so um what i'm actually doing right now is i'm working on the network to build applications decentralized applications Mm. Uh, they're known as smart contracts so you can do a lot of stuff with that in the industry Mm. right now so Mm. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you're someone that uses a lot of Twitter, but I kind of, I am a Twitter user. And a lot of the times I see that uh, someone like an Elon Musk tends to affect the trends a lot. Uh, So just out of curiosity, like how does that affect uh, the process of maybe mining more Bitcoin or mining Ethereum or Dogecoin? Well, what I see from that, from the Twitter is that a lot of people are sheep, their followers and they're buying, mm. they're blindly following this technology into right. a hype. For example, like if you see what happened with Dogecoin, people were following mm. like crazy. And whenever Elon Musk tweeted something positive about Dogecoin, it would basically make the price of Dogecoin go up. Right. But it does not mean that, yeah, it is kind of like he's basically affecting the network because he's a powerful celebrity. 
Right. Um, it's kind of like stocks, you know, like if a celebrity tweets about it and say that, hey, I'm going to invest in this stock, the stock can go up. Mm. So crypto is like kind of like between currency and uh, a stock. Mm. Mm. Um, what I recommend doing is that do your research about what you're investing in. Don't just blindly invest in something hoping that you're going to get a 500% uh, return in a day. Right. Like right. it's a long-term game. Like it might mm. take uh, 10 years, but you have to keep on investing in what you believe in and you mm. have to keep up with the technology. So mm. do, do you think that, um, well, yeah, I guess because of the world that, because of the world that we're in, do you think that we're afraid to pay the long-term game, be it with money, be it with crypto or be like, it with things in general? I feel like a lot of people, uh, they're impatient. They just want the success, you know, mm. but to get success, sometimes it's a long-term game and there's obstacles in between you're going to face. And it's like, you just got to be ready and not give up, keep on going. Mm. Uh, I feel like we're living in a society where a lot of people are lazy, uh, impatient, mm. and they just want something really quickly. Like they just want the success really quickly. But the quicker you get the success, that means that the quicker you have to handle it. And is your mindset mm. even ready to handle that success? Maj majority of people cannot handle that success. And what happens is that like they lose everything. Mm. So, I mean, I'm just speaking from experience. That's what happened to me once. Mm. <laughs> so I I have faced some crazy obstacles in life, but. Mm. that's why I have like a lot of experience in this mm. do you mind yeah. elaborating on that if you don't mind like if you're comfortable sharing I mean I'm comfortable man like I lost like thousands upon thousands like recently I lost like 20,000 uh, I made 5,000 to 20,000 in a matter of months like three months mm. and boom I couldn't handle that mm. <laughs> I, I got more greedy and boom I lost it and then I got my initial capital back but Man, the reason I was making money was it's just long term. Like mm. it's a long term game. And mm. uh I mean, I'm not like the richest man in the world, but I feel like over time I have developed a strong mindset. And I feel like at this point, like if I look at my previous me from like five years ago, like I feel like I'm more stronger. Mm -hmm. And I can actually see that. I can see it in my results. Like if I take a loss right now. I make it back quicker than ever because before when I took a loss, even a small loss, it took some time. But mm -hmm. since I built that mindset, I recover really fast. Mm. So. Gotcha. And I think it's like on the way you also make connections, you network. Uh, there's a, one of my connections, he always says this, like network to build the network. So. Mm. I mean, whoever you hang out with right now is the person you're going to be in five years. Like, you're going to get influenced right. by those people. So, right, right. And just to just to sort of clarify, the money that you lost was through stocks. Was it stocks, which is why you sort of saw a lot oh, of yeah. fluctuation, or was it crypto? I actually made a lot of money in stocks, and then I made mm. a lot of money in crypto. Mm. And I kind of got on the GameStop and AMC hype. Mm. And I was like, shoot, I should have known better. A lot of people, they like the small percentage of people are making money, not like the large percentage. And the mm. reason is majority of the people are lazy, impatient. They don't have the mindset. So my original strategy, strategy was actually working, but uh, mm. I kind of got, I played myself, man. <laughs> so gotcha yeah gotcha uh I, I was actually thinking about the gamestop thing earlier when you mentioned uh, the sort of fluctuations and how twitter right. or how people on twitter can be sheeps um because right. wasn't wasn't that sort of like an influence through reddit where people um right started well uh, what happened me, buying stuff okay. what happened with yeah. me was uh I actually got into stock options, which is much more risky than stocks. 
So mm. your contracts in one contract, you get hundred shares of a stock, but uh, they expire. And I was buying weekly contracts on AMC. I mean, at first I invested like 700. I lost that. And then I was like, okay, I see what's going on. I invested a little bit more and then a little bit more. I, I was like playing the wave. You're not supposed to mm. do that. <laughs> mm. So, and then I was like investing in other things just to recover from the losses. It was just like, it's like you're kind of like falling off a bicycle and then you're kind of like trying to balance yourself before mm. you actually fall down. Mm. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, just to sort of uh, differentiate, what's the difference between stocks and uh, stock? You said stock contract. Was that the other thing that you mentioned? Stock options. Stock options. Yeah. What's the difference? Between uh, those two? Stock options are derivatives. Uh, they don't exactly uh, follow the price of the stock market. Uh, mm. They don't follow the exact price of the stock. Uh, mm. So you can buy, you can buy like affiliation of that stock at a much cheaper rate, like 50 cents. But when you're buying one contract, you're buying 50 cents times hundred because one contract is hundred shares. For, and okay. then you, you have to buy it on expiration date. Meaning that if you buy one contract, you have to set a date when it's going to expire. So you're holding on to the contract, but also you're losing money on the time decay and stuff. Mm. But uh, stock options is not actually my field. So that's where I played myself also. I was trying to make that quick money. Mm. So uh, there's a lot to it in stock options. Um, mm. Like you can make money sideways on the market. You can make money like while the market is going down. But you need to know what, uh, the Greeks are, there's like Greek symbols representing time, mm -hmm. uh, the stock price. Uh, mm. So I'm not like an expert at that. So I kind of stick to one strategy right now, long-term. Invest mm -hmm. in yourself, uh, just invest in long-term because it's proven. If Warren Buffett can do it long-term, you can win also. So right. like start a right. business, for example. Like don't get mm. too greedy. That's the one thing. Mm. Don't 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 do something that you don't understand. Like for me, it was mm. like stock options, and I'm not. Mm. I'm still not an expert, so I don't recommend. <laughs> I don't recommend mm. people doing stock options. I would recommend people doing long term investing. So. Mm. Mm. Well, okay. Based off of what you just said, I have a couple of questions. Uh, so I'll hit the first one. Um, right. Through that. How important did you? How important was it for you to understand that the sense of delayed gratification is more important rather than instant gratification? Because that's what you went out seeking, right? You went out, you sought after a sort of instant hit of a stock or a stock option or whatever uh, else associated with the stocks that you were buying. So, how important right. is it for you now that you've noticed that uh, change um, through experience? To rely I on kinda, gratification. I kind of like to compare this to ping pong. Like, for example, mm. like when you're playing ping pong, right. if you hit the ball too fast, can you handle that? Like, it's like same with life, you know, like your lifestyle. Like if you try to go too fast for that instant gratification, I mean, maybe you're not going to be able to handle it. You might miss mm. the ball, you know? Mm. So mm. like, but if you're hitting the ball slightly, like slowly, you know, you have more control over it. So it's like, if you're thinking about the long-term game, you have more control over it mm. than the short-term game. Mm. So, yeah. That's a fair point. Yeah, that's a fair point. Because I think when you try to de dive in head first, you tend to lose a lot. You tend to lose control. Um, right. You don't have as much control when you dive in but head first. Whereas The yeah, more you do ahead. it, the more you build up the skill set to actually handle that fast mechanism, right. you know? Right. So, which is going to be which is going to be my next question. In the sense that um, sometimes we have to take those sort of steps to sort of give it a shot because you never know which way oh, things yeah. can go, right? So uh, now that you've had this experience of losing money, how do you know where to draw the fine line? I feel like, I mean, one that's the fine line basically don't go too fast in something you don't understand try to like mm. 
go on the slow and steady route until you understand something really like to the point that you can actually handle it, you know? Right. So it's just so, repetition after repetition and sort of getting that right. rep into. Uh, one thing I know is that people equals power, the more people, more mm. power. So, I mean, if you're going to be doing something big and really fast, really quickly, uh, surround yourself with people, invest in some people around you. Uh, mm. Then you can actually handle something really quickly because you're together, more powerful. So, mm. how how can how can one invest in a person? And if you want to elaborate on that thought of in terms of investing in the right people, investing on in the right people around you, um, how does one go about doing that? In, from mean, your perspective, of course. Um, most important thing is like. Uh, like you have to understand yourself, who you are, what your goals mm. are in, in life, right? Mm. You, I mean, there's a lot of valuable people out there, but are they the right type of people you want to hang out with? You have to think like that. So for me personally, it's like mind, body, and spirit. So like if people are, if certain groups of people are focused on that, I will surround myself with those people. And mm. then it comes to business, um, something that I work on, like, for example, I like cryptocurrency. So I'm right. going to surround myself with people who do cryptocurrency. So like I try to look for people who are bigger than me. Mm. And with that, actually, it brings more connections. And then you bring in more knowledge. And you kind of gain more power like that in something you actually have uh, something that you're ambitious about, you know? Right. So, so you're learning from the people that have experience of working with it and so on. So you get to right. learn a lot from them. Right. right. So, uh, uh, I mean, if uh, you want right. to actually build a team of people, mm -hmm. like I think the most valuable thing is look for people who are better than you, who are actually, who can actually teach you rather than you're teaching them and wasting time because time is precious, you know? So like look for people who are better than you, I guess. I mean, that's what I think. Mm. Mm. Hey, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. No, I take your point. Uh, but do you think that this is just sort of maybe me playing devil's advocate in a sense, but do you think that um, you can get into a sort of an echo chamber if you were to just sort of be in a group with a singular sort of mindset? Or do you think that that's more Wait, positive than me. it is negative? What was that? What chamber? echo chamber like like the concept of an echo chamber where you're just listening to the same thing or listening Are to the things about, that you want to listen to is it like tunnel vision sure yeah i guess you could call it that um not not exactly to be quite honest right. with you it's sort of like so i feel like uh, if you're hanging with people who are just like not really growing i mean try to figure out like what type of benefits you can get from that person maybe I mean, sometimes it just comes to, it's not about like gaining value from each person. Sometimes it's about giving value. Maybe that person actually needs value. So you try to help mm -hmm. that person out if he's not growing. But right. uh, I mean, you cannot just like force someone to actually change or do something. You just give exactly. them options. You give them ideas. And if they change, it's their will. If they don't, it's it's all good. Like you just move on. But I mean, it does mm -hmm. not mean that if someone is just not growing, it it doesn't mean that you have to like uh, cut the connection off. Maybe that mm -hmm. person might grow in the future, you know, like, but uh, don't hate that person because he's not growing. <laughs> right, right, right. That's no, totally, because we all grow at a different pace. We all grow at a different rate. Right. So you don't necessarily have control over how someone else around you grows. Right. But uh, yeah, there's something interesting that you mentioned there in terms of how there's a give and take. Uh, how important do you think it is for people to have that sense of give and take in the groups that they're in? Because if you're just being that leech that's sapping out everything and not necessarily giving back, um, I think it's it really can be a little important. harmful, I think. So, yeah. Just mm -hmm. giving just a little bit, it can add up to society, you know? Like, you have to give because, look, if you become the world's richest man, for example, mm-hmm, and you're not giving you're being really selfish like i mean you're not really benefiting your environment and it's gonna mm. come back to you because you're living in a place where actually it's powered by people 
government. So, like, if you're not contributing, I mean, it's going to come back to you. I mean, different mm -hmm. ways. That's what I believe. And um, also, like, if someone in my community becomes rich, it does not mm -hmm. mean that you have to be jealous of him or hate him because he's rich or distance yourself. Actually, mm -hmm. that actually, that's a benefit of itself. If someone becomes bigger, better than you, that means that it's going to trickle down in the community. The community is going to become better. Right. So uh, if that person, if someone in the community becomes big, that means that he's going to create more jobs. Mm. So, I mean, that's like, I, I got like, the mindset I've built up over time, it's just crazy, man. <laughs> mm. Why do you think it's hard for us to shake that off? Like, is a lot of the times I think, especially the cultures that we come from or culture in general around the world, you know, like we tend to get envious of the people who are doing better than us. Um, why do you think it's harder I, for us to shake I that off? Like, is it just was, us wanting? I guess like people really want something, but I don't know. Like some people, also it comes to the mindset, what you're thinking, what type of people you, you were surrounded with when you were growing mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, there's a famous saying that just focus on yourself, compete with yourself. You're just going to be happy. Mm -hmm. Like, don't try to look at people better than you and just, I mean, try to look at them and be like, hey, I'm inspired by you. Right. But I'm glad you're up there. You're actually doing something new and you're improving and I can learn from you now. Mm. But uh, I feel like jealousy, envy, and greed, it can really disrupt you, bro. Like, <laughs> it keeps you mm. kind of like in a steady spot, you know? Um, mm -hmm. some people, they get really into that and it can really like emotionally affect them. So, mm -hmm. uh, the only man, the only person you need to be competing with yourself, I mean, competing is yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. So number one thing, compete with yourself. Don't try to like get in that zone of being jealous and be, you know, greedy. Mm -hmm. So, I mean. Gotcha. Because, yeah. yeah, I think it's, I think with the way that we are or the way that we've been right. wired, it's very sort of, um, right. it's very, it's in, it's an inbuilt characteristic, I feel like. Very, you know what I noticed sort of, is that, mm -hmm. one thing I noticed in life is that like, if you actually compete with yourself and kind of like stay in your own place, and right. grow in your own level. And you know you're growing because you're competing with yourself and you're actually tracking the progress. You're going to be happy. Like, you're going to be happy with little things you have. Mm -hmm. Like, literally. But if you're just, like, competing with someone else, trying to be in their lane, their lifestyle is different. Their storyline is different. Right. You're not going to be happy because everything they got, they got it through something else. Like, by their surrounding and their surrounding was different than yours. So like, you're not going to be happy because the frequency is different between you two. Mm, mm. So, How important is it for us to understand that we all have different templates? Cause like you just said, right. There's, you all have different storylines. We have different templates. Like, I feel like that's right. something that we tend to forget a lot. Like even on social media, like if somebody's listening to a motivational speaker, People try to imbibe that and hope that that the same thing happens to them, but it doesn't. That's not how it no. works. Yeah. What I, one thing I notice is that if you're young, try to like try everything you can, and then find that one purpose. Like you're gonna find that perfect zone, that perfect mm -hmm. strategy to grow, and then just stick to it. Put your hundred percent on it. Right. Uh, I like what Gary V does. Uh, he talks about reverse engineering your goals. Find a purpose mm -hmm. in life. Find a goal. Major goal and try to reverse engineer it and try to like chase that goal and stick to it. So. Mm. Mm. Can you elaborate on that thought a little more uh, in terms of reverse engineering? Like, do you just sort of um, you find your goal like, and then work backwards? Yeah, that's what you do. Uh, it's a long process. Like it, it doesn't just happen over one day, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, like I actually keep to-do lists. I keep track of like, I have special applications because you cannot just put everything in your head. That's stressful. Right. You kind of like, 
it's like writing a book. You kind of do it over time and then it becomes mm. a book. So like same thing with your protocol. Like this is what I call a protocol. You kind of create to-do mm. lists. You kind of create like a whole bunch of lists for your goals and try to like see if you can accomplish those. Because then mm. you, because like, for example, you have major goals, right? But then there's minor goals and then right. there's obstacles. So like, you cannot just like put all that in your head. It's just going to be too much overwhelming. So you have to kind of mm-hmm. like write everything down and play the game of chess. And it's easy. Mm. Like it's more easy that way than putting everything in your head and trying to like come up with a strategy. Mm. Because like life, like there's a lot of things in life you have to handle. So, <laughs> right, right. And what if you really want to use, oh, sorry to uh, interrupt you, but go ahead. Oh yeah. Like if you really want to actually like accomplish something like you accomplish like a major goal, just write down everything. And the one application I recommend is tick tick. It's pretty mm. nice. And, um, I have been reading some audiobooks through this other app called headway. So like, I mean, not all of us wants to read books and I'm not like a book person either, but I want to gain the knowledge. I want to gain that experience. And mm. sometimes it's hard to find a mentor, but sometimes the only mentor you can find is a book. Right. So what you do is you try to read the books, but it's time consuming. So headway kind of solves that problem. It's like you read, you listen to the book or read it within 15 minutes. You have learned like the main purpose of that book. Right, right, right. Uh, but some people get it wrong. It does not mean that the book is like the perfect strategy of life. Mm-hmm. See, like even with books, there's strategies, but that same strategy is not going to work on you. So what you right. do is you kind of try to apply it in real life and see if it works out. And if it doesn't, then you just keep track of that. Hey, this strategy doesn't work. Mm-hmm. But the idea of developing a protocol or coming up with different strategies is actually reading as many books and applying the lessons in real life. Mm. Because that's how you're going to come up with the strategy. Right. Right. And then Just you're going to, yeah. go ahead. you're going to find like changes like in life, like you're growing like 10 times much faster than before. Boom. Mm. Now, you know, <laughs> mm. Mm. So, uh, what books are you reading at the moment? If you have any recommendations for the people who are watching and listening. Shoot. Right now, I'm not reading any books. Uh, or I'm like listening right to through the app. Uh, no, not at the moment. Like, I'm pretty any sad books that you've what... read so far? Um, there are a lot of books I have read through that app. I don't remember the name because I've read like hundreds. So... <laughs> But I, I have gained some strategies from some of the books. Um, mm-hmm. There is this one book about how to declutter your life. That was pretty nice. Uh, mm-hmm. It kind of makes you more productive. But uh, most of the books on Headway is like much, it's about self-improvement. So like, mm-hmm. I mean, I was reading, I was listening to books like almost every day. So like, I kind of lost track of like the titles because that's a mm. lot of books but mm. um i gained too much like i gained like a lot of strategies from it like a skill set of strategies so mm. but even if you read a book it's about repetition like that's how you learn that's how your brain mm. is programmed so uh i might probably start like rereading like the books I have read before. And the great thing about Headway is that uh, it creates like notes for you, insights. Mm. So um, I might start reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad again. Uh, mm. How to Declutter Your Life. Um, uh, the Artist's Way, you know? <laughs> so. Gotcha. Gotcha. If you just wanted to sort of add... Um... I mean, I know it's probably a lot harder for you to sort of truncate it to a few, but if there were like sort of five overarching or five overall sort of strategies that you learned from these books, um, what were those? Oh, like overall, like what I see is that, okay, overall what I see is that you got to stay consistent, organized, Mm -hmm. 
all the books are talking about that consistency and staying organized and uh, not giving up on your goals. So mm-hmm. that's with consistency. Right. Uh, sleeping, sleep is really important. Try to get that eight hours, nine hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, try to eat the right food. So, I mean, main thing I see is that sleeping, staying consistent, and have some goals in life. Like, don't just be like, "Ah, oh, I don't know. Everything is undecided." Try to find that purpose. Mm. So, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, just to sort of head back on what you were talking about earlier. Um, like overall, your goal is to help and give back to people, um, be it through setting up smaller businesses or like you know just sort of finding ways, finding networks to sort of give back to the community. Um, right. I just wanted to ask, like, uh, how are you trying to give back to the community through crypto or through any of the businesses that you're setting up? If you are, if you're comfortable sharing. So my skill set is like programming, uh, software mm. engineering, building applications. So I would like try to um, build applications that can help society out. Uh, mm. Build like a decentralized tool that can help the economy or society out. You know, like sometimes we might need decentralized tools because centralized tools disturbs the society. Mm. so there's a lot of issues that i see for example uh i'm not trying to get too political but banking uh voting our voting system Mm -hmm. like uh, there's a lot of things out there that can improve and uh with technology you can actually do that uh for example like taxes a lot of people are not getting their refund uh, a lot of people are not getting their uh, unemployment checks really quickly. It can, we mm-hmm. have the tools. We have the tools. We just, one person cannot do that. We need a whole bunch right. of people on a common page to improve the system. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we have freaking uh, Facebook that can handle billion users. So why can't our government system handle billion users, you know? <laughs> Mm. like why does some of the websites go down when a billion users are using it so there's like a lot of issues like that that can be solved through technology but we have to kind of be together you know we got to be like bees Mm. all synchronized Mm. Mm. yeah definitely definitely because um if you just wanted to elaborate what's the major difference that people we're not necessarily aware of the difference between decentralized and centralized sort of applications that one would need to know. Like what's the major difference between the two? So you can think of centralized is like, it's like kind of like, um, so a centralized system is like kind of like monarchy, kind of like Mm. someone makes the rules and controls everything. Someone mm-hmm. can actually access your data. Someone can access right. your photos. Someone can access your pictures and everything, like messages. They can actually edit it. They can do anything they want. Mm. A decentralized system is like no one owns that data. No one can imi- manipulate it. Like mm. you are the owner. You know where it is. Right. No one can see it. It's like the system, the network only sees it. It's communicating with each other. Mm. But... It's uh, it's encrypted. Mm. Uh, the network is just seeing letters and numbers, mm. but those letters and numbers are becoming data for you to see. So, like, mm. I feel like centralized systems are not too strong, like in certain scenarios. But uh, mm. decentralized systems kind of solve some of the common issues we have in society. So. Mm. But I feel like ha- if you want like fairness and justice in certain situations, decentralization can really help you out with that. Mm. So, do you think that decentralized systems will sort of lead to a decentralized society? Uh, what was that? 
do you think that decentralized systems, like the one that you were just proposing, do you think that that would lead to a decentralized society? It could. I mean, as people, I think the main thing we have to do is like, um, we have to um, try it out. So mm. we have to just try a decentralized tool. Mm. So. Thank you for watching this episode of Perspective Platoon with Pratik. Make sure to follow Nasser on his social media accounts and mention in the comment section below some of the things that you found interesting, intriguing or relatable about this conversation. Make sure to also check the description box below for other sources of information and content that we've talked about today. If you've made it this far, thank you once again. I really appreciate you joining in on the conversation. Make sure to like this video, share it around and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to never miss another episode. Until next time, stay safe, take care, and don't forget to keep your mind open to different perspectives. Because you never know, random relatability might just be around the corner.